Well, I just got out of the hotline. Lots of enthusiasm, big crowds, hard to get a seat uh, if you didn't get there early. Those that couldn't get a seat, uh, big crowds standing outside of the room, looking at the, the video from outside the room. Lots of really important studies presented for the first hotline. Obviously some new information on semaglutide for obesity phenotype, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. We saw data on uh, high heart rate episodes in AFib and anticoagulation. And we saw some more colchicine data for uh, post-operative uh, uh, patients. So it's really hard to describe, you know, how big this whole this whole event is. And you know, you can see the crowds walking around. Uh, and ultimately, uh, for the hotline event, you know, it's basically a packed house. So I think what we saw with Step FPEF was really the beginning of what would probably be described as a new era in focusing on obesity phenotype heart failure with preserved ejection fraction in the sense that there's a number of compounds being explored but the first of these compounds would be semaglutide and obviously we know weight loss will really help with these patients but seeing that you had measurable improvement in health status improvement in uh, KCCQ as well as improved walking distance and the first markers that we've seen for uh, reversing cardiac remodeling with uh, change in NT proBNP. B. Typically, patients who uh, lose weight actually have increase in NT proBNP B when they when they do this through conventional weight loss strategies like exercise and diet. So it's really uh, exciting to be part of a new era in cardiometabolic treatments. I think there's a lot of good questions that have come up about how we're going to practice differently. Are these medicines safe long term? Do the doses need to be adjusted? Are they safe in younger patients? Uh, and are there ways to uh, preferentially target fat loss, uh, different types of stores like visceral fat, uh, adipose tissue in the liver, and avoid, avoid complications like sarcopenia, uh, which is a concern for a lot of our elderly patients in particular. So I think uh, we already use semaglutide a lot in our practice for uh, patients with cardiometabolic disease, but opening the door to use this for obese patients with HEPPEF without diabetes, I think this is uh, in many ways a game changer for making this better for our patients. I think the audience was really relieved to see the results. I don't think there was a huge surprise. Uh, and there was a big round of applause and I, a great discussion after the presentation of the results. The other big news of the day was uh, the release of the guidelines. Uh, a number of guidelines came out this morning, but of course, as a heart failure clinician, I was most excited to see the European update to the guidelines for patients with heart failure. And, you know, really for the first time, we've seen something other than diuretics recommended as a class one. We saw the SGLT2 inhibitor class uh, recommended for patients with mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction heart failure with a class 1A recommendation. So it's really the first time we've seen that uh, for a, a population of patients that makes up half of the patients with heart failure in the global burden uh, to be able to have a highly recommended therapy that uh, many, many uh, researchers and scientists have participated over the last decade to really contribute to this uh, breakthrough. So it's good to see that update in the guidelines. We'll, see, we'll expect to see something similar in the American guidelines uh, forthcoming. So.